The wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radiyallahu anha, she said, Ma ra'aytu Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yasumu shahran ghayra ramadhan illa sha'ban. Kana yasumu sha'ban kullah. Akhrajahu al-Bukhari. Bukhari collected that Aisha radiyallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said the Prophet, that I've never seen the Prophet sallallahu fast an entire month outside of Ramadan, other than Ramadan, but the month of Sha'ban. He used to fast all of it. Now there is a discussion about this hadith, did Aisha radiallahu anha mean that the Prophet fasted the 30 days or the 29 days of Sha'ban, or was it the majority of the month? And that, that's an, a common Arabic expression. To say that he fasted the whole month, meaning that he fasted the majority of the month. That's the way the Arabic language is used. But the point here is not about whether we should fast the month of, Rama, uh, of Sha'ban or not, it's about the whole point behind the hadith is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to treat the month of Sha'ban differently than the rest of the months. So we have Usama ibn Zayd radiyallahu anhuma asks the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, Ya Rasulullah, Lam araka tasumu shahran Oh Messenger of Allah, I've never seen you fast so often in a month as I've seen you fast in the month of Sha'ban. The Prophet says, This is a month that most people don't pay attention to. It falls between Rajab and Ramadan. Most people don't take it seriously. They don't focus on worship during this month. Why? Because people are looking forward to Ramadan and they are intending to start their worship in Ramadan. And it's a month during which my deeds or the actions of a human being are presented to Allah. Some of the scholars who commented on this hadith, they say your deeds throughout the year are presented officially, they are lifted and officially presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows them already. But this is a special type of presentation of your deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a very special moment. It's not like just your deeds are presented before Allah. This is a historical moment in your life when your deeds throughout the year are presented to Allah for evaluation. It's more of an account, but a very minor account happening in this world. So it's a profound moment in our life. And the Prophet ﷺ says the month of Sha'ban, during the month of Sha'ban, my deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I would like to be in the best of my states when my deeds are offered to Allah and He is evaluating them. That shows how, the, how seriously the Prophet ﷺ took his whole relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it shows that the month of Sha'ban is more of a time for conditioning. Many of us lie in wait for Ramadan to approach, to start, then we think that's when the race starts. But just like with our physical performance, if you are about to take part in a, in a race or a marathon, if you wait till the marathon starts and that's when you give your best, most likely you won't be able to complete it. You need conditioning. Anyone who's going to compete in a race, they will need time for conditioning. At least six months or maybe a year. And ideally, more than that. If you want to put yourself in an optimal condition, you do not adopt a diet or a healthy lifestyle one month of the year. You might start getting healthy, seeing some improvement over this month, but the moment you go back to your unhealthy lifestyle, you lose all the benefits. Many of us, this is how we treat Ramadan. 
And this is why many of us don't benefit optimally from Ramadan. The blessings of Ramadan are uncountable, are beyond imagination. And the reason we are not reaping the fruits of Ramadan, the reason many of us feel a burnout in Ramadan, is that we are just treating it as a fad, as an anomaly, as a departure from our lifestyle throughout the year. That's not why Ramadan is here. Ramadan, yes, is a very special time. It's the perfect season for good deeds. But you cannot take Ramadan as a departure from your lifestyle. The whole year should be a conditioning for Ramadan. So every year you're upping your game. Every year you're moving to the next level. So throughout your life you're building momentum. You're coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every Ramadan is better than Ramadan before. But if after Ramadan you're going to burn all of the points that you have scored in Ramadan, then you're going to start from scratch again next Ramadan. What's the point? Now I'm not saying you should not do your best in Ramadan if you do not observe your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the year. But I'm saying we should aim at something higher than this. We should be more ambitious when it comes to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if your life is not about Allah, what is it about? This is why Ramadan comes into your life. And if you want to use Ramadan, if you really want to reap the benefits of Ramadan and perform well in Ramadan, you start from now. You start now. And I don't invite you to fast all of the month of Sha'ban. But if you look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ, he used to fast very often. Generally speaking, the Prophet ﷺ would fast every Monday and Thursday. So it makes sense that the Prophet ﷺ, as he is accelerating his growth or speeding up the process, preparing for Ramadan, that he would fast the majority of the month of Sha'ban. But if you are someone who doesn't fast throughout the year, so it makes sense to start fasting at least three days of the month of Sha'ban, the three white days. Or maybe fast every Monday or every Thursday. Or if you want to push yourself a little bit more and you do better conditioning for Ramadan, then you fast every Monday and Thursday. And it's not only fasting, but there is more. You start reciting Qur'an more. A lot of tabi'een who were merchants, who had shops, they used to sell, they used to, used to be active in the market. Because there were people who put their trust in Allah, but there, there were people whose, whose feet were grounded in reality. Because being connected to Allah does not mean being disconnected from life and its dynamics. So they would have a shop, they would have a business. But when Sha'ban came, they would close their business. And they would stick to their mushaf, to their Qur'an, and read it as a conditioning for when Ramadan comes. Now I'm not saying close your business. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying quit your studies for Sha'ban and Ramadan. These were people who were ahead of us in their game. These were people who built that kind of momentum over time. But we should follow their footsteps in taking at least one step forward. So when Ramadan comes, you can take two other steps forward. And you realize at the end of Ramadan, that you have changed in a way, in a positive way, that it makes it hard for you to go back to your old ways. If you retreat, you take one step back, not three. So you're still better than when you started. That's the challenge.